All right, so a few days ago, I did a video on Tyson Fury, and this was in response to people just claiming, um, you know, again, with nothing really to go on, that Tyson Fury will beat Alexander Rusek, he'll stop him early, and it'll be quite easy. And I refuted those claims, and I said, well, for one, I don't expect an easy fight for either guy. And second of all, Tyson Fury is not known as someone who goes in there at the highest level, certainly, or anyway, decent level, and gets early stoppages. His last stoppage that you would deem early was back in 2019, was when he stopped Tom Schwartz in two rounds. Since 2012, so bear in mind, 2012 was over a decade ago, he's had Joey Abel in round four, Zephyr Zephyr in round four, and Tom Schwartz in round two. So they're the only early stoppages. Now, also, people have been saying that Alexander Usyk is going to stop Tyson Fury, may stop him early, but it's going to be overall an easy fight for him. And again, I refute those claims because I think for both guys going into this fight, it is going to be a very tough fight for both men. And I wouldn't be shocked if both guys, even win or lose, whoever wins and whoever loses, will come and say, that was the hardest fight in my career. If Tyson Fury wins, it wouldn't shock me if he says, yeah, that's the hardest fight of my career. If Alexander Usyk wins, vice versa. I think we are going to see a very tough, very competitive fight. And the reason why I see that is, is that I think that the time out of the ring will, well, I say the time out of the ring, but the this fight was obviously meant to happen in February. And it's now happening in May. Tyson Fury obviously rescheduled the fight. Going to be in a cut and sparring, whatever, whatever. And now it's in May. That's given him more time to prepare. It's also given Alexander Rusek more time to prepare. With Tyson Fury, normally it seems to me that when he's in camp throughout and the longer he stays in camp, basically, and the more he's kind of switched on for a fight, the better we get. Now, against Nganu, he can say he trained 12 weeks. He didn't. Look at him. He didn't look like he trained really hard for that fight. And it showed in the ring on fight night. He didn't even look that sharp. It's for the most part, anyway, and Ganu, you know, a lot of people would. I, I felt Fury won it, but a lot of people claim Ganu won it. Whatever, whatever. I think the fact that he's been ticking over, he's now in full camp again. That will pay dividends to him come what may. With Alexander Usyk as well, I think the same thing. You know, he's ticking over. He's been looking good, so I think we're going to see both guys. I think it's fair to say both guys are not at their athletic peak anymore. That's fair to say. Both guys are in their mid-30s now. They're not going to be as you know fresh as they were when they were in their early to mid-20s. But I think we're still going to see the best of both, what they certainly have left in the tank. But with Alexander Rusek, people claiming that it's going to be an easy win for Alexander Rusek. He's going to stop Tyson Fury, might even stop him early. Again, I go back to Alexander Rusek and I say, well, what makes you actually think you know based upon what alexander rusek has done it's a great career but but what le leads you to believe that he'll stop him early because if you look at alexander rusek's record he's 21 and 0 that's been a, a very good league like he's fought a, a lot of good opponents in those 21 wins with 14 stoppages which is a 66 percent knockout ratio which is you know it's not terrible but alexander rusek has never been a no a devastating puncher i know he got to 10 and 0 before he fought Christoph Glowacki way back in the day, and all those 10 fights were by knockout. But even if you look at them, you know, Alexander Rusek, in fact, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. Yeah, he's never had a first round knockout. He's never had a second round knockout. He's had two knockouts, two stoppage wins in round number three. And again, these were not against, you know, when you look at his resume, for the first 10 fights, they weren't uh crazy yeah they weren't crazy good when you look at it realistically they weren't now he was going through these guys he was doing what he had to do you know he had a fifth round stoppage in his debut fourth round stoppage third round knockout fourth round knockout seventh round ninth round eighth round third round and seventh round again so 10 and all with 10 knockouts this was the end of 2015 had a bit of a gap then before september before he fought Glowacki. all these fights were against you know, not the cream of the crop of cruiserweight, it's fair to say. He was able to get the 10 stoppage wins. If you go and look online, some of them were body shots, some of them are accumulation of punches. So he's not going in there and, you know, Deontay Wilder-esque, tearing through guys, one punch, bam, it's over. He's not been known for that, even a cruiserweight. When he steps up and fights Glowacki, goes to 12 rounds. Now bear in mind, Christoph Glowacki had been down in his... Previous, no, he fought Cunningham in his previous fight. He wasn't down in that fight, but he was down against Hook at least once in that fight. Never really seemed to buzz him, never put a dent in him. And Christoph Glowacki has been stopped. Now, fair enough, that was him probably in his absolute peak. 
and when he was stopped by the likes of Akoli, by the likes of Reactor, by the likes of Bredis, that was probably not peak. Well, definitely wasn't by later stages career peak Christoph Glowacki. To be some Machunu, who does, to be fair, take some stopping, went nine rounds with him. Michael Hunter, he did hurt Michael Hunter and have him down, but was able to see the final bell. Michael Hunter, that's his only loss. So, Michael Hunter, at least at one stage in Hunter's career, and there's a video due on him as well, make, make no mistake of that. At least at that point in Michael Hunter's career and what he went on to do in the next couple of years, it aged very well. Right now, it's kind of in a bit of a limbo because we don't really know where Hunter is coming or going. Stoppage of Marco Hook, majority decision, very close fight against Briadis, and then a win on points against Morak Asiev, and then stopping Tony Bellew in eight. I can't really explain how impressive that list of fighters is because, you know, even people like to be some Machunu have gone on to do good things after that fight in Usek. I mean, now Usek really, that's one of his most impressive fights if you've never seen the Machunu fight because Machunu is an anomaly. <laughs> he's about five foot eight. <laughs> Seriously, he's about five foot eight. Very jacked individual, very long arms, and he's primarily an outside fighter. You don't tend to see They're very slick as well. But Usyk, did he beat him in his own game? It was a brilliant performance, really. And, you know, again, Michael Hunter. I think that was on the undercard. I think the Tabisa Machunu fight was on the undercard of Joe Smith versus Hopkins. And the Hunter fight was on the undercard of Jason Sosa Loma. And obviously, Hook seen better days. But Briadis undefeated. Kasiev undefeated. Bellew never lost a cruiserweight. And uh, was his man. Well, I don't know it wasn't necessarily mandatory. But he was able to get a title shot being champion in recess. So... These are very good elite fighters, but he stopped one who was well past his best, Bellew, who retired straight after, two others who, you know, in Briadis and Gassiev, who, to be fair, have not been stopped since. So he wasn't getting rid of these guys, but then he goes to heavyweight, Witherspoon, yeah. Chisora, did buzz Chisora in that fight. Stunned Joshua a couple of times in their first fight, noticeably in the 12th round, where he could have really potentially got Joshua out of there, and then obviously stopped Daniel Dubois, in a fight that I, I always go back to because I've seen people claim, and this is just a little nitpick, that that wasn't a good performance. I don't know how you could come to that conclusion because I thought it was a fine performance. And some I've seen some people say, well, you know, it wasn't, you know, vintage Usek. Well, what is vintage Usek? Was Chisora vintage Usek? Because that wasn't a great performance. Yeah, he, he won it clearly. But, you know, there was moments in there you were like, oof, there's a bit of a few worries there, you know, early on. And, you know, Chisora did better than Dubois did. So when people say, you know, well, it wasn't Usek at his best, was like, well, was, was Chisora Usek at his best? Was Briadis Usek at his best? Was Ches Witherspoon Usek at his best? You know, I mean, against Dubois, apart from the fifth round, he never looked like losing a round. Looked good, did what he needed to do, and, you know, I thought it was a good performance. So that's Alexander Usek. To be honest with you, there's nothing from his resume that makes me think that he'll stop Tyson Fury. I think this is going to be a long drawn out affair for either guy and to be honest with you I don't envision Alexander Usyk even having an easy time with Tyson Fury to be honest with you I think it's going to be a tough fight for him when I look at that resume and you know that's a fun resume to look through because you're just like name 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 you're like Jesus Christ this guy doesn't play around and they're all apart from Dubois which was in Poland which is you know, at the border with his home country they're all away it's really incredible really to look at that but Nothing from that to indicate that Usyk, and again, anomalies do happen in boxing. I'm not saying that it can't happen that Fury stops Usyk early or that Usyk vice versa does the same. I would say it's very unlikely, but at the end of the day, people play the lotto. People pick numbers for the lotto and sometimes they win. So strange things do happen. But I see this fight as being a drawn out long affair. I don't see one guy dominating and winning this fight clearly. I think it's gonna be a close nip and tuck competitive fight of which I am definitely looking forward to. Let me know your thoughts. And again, I asked the Fury fans, if you think Fury's going to win early, explain why you think that. Don't just say he wins early. Just ex explain your rationale, think behind it. I'd also like to hear from the people picking Usek to win early or Usek to dominate. What's your rationale behind that? Now, they, they normally do tend to be more rational, so I would expect that they would explain it, which I appreciate. But let me know um, what your thoughts are, uh, your rationale behind thinking Usek wins early. I just wanted to give my two cents on that and run through his career. And it's like, well, at the highest level, he's not really shown signs that he's going to do it. It's certainly not a heavyweight, but it doesn't mean he can't. The same with Tyson Fury. It doesn't mean he can't. 
but it appears unlikely. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed it, people. If you could, I would really appreciate it if you could smash the like button, hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. We're nearly at uh, 70,200. I need about another 15 or so. So if you could, share the video, whatever you can. I appreciate it. Peace.